What do you know about how your health really works? Because there is a priority system. And so long as you're taking care of things in the priority and you know how things set in your body, your mind, and your spirit, then you're going to have a much happier, much healthier life. You're living your past every day. The past, the rituals, the way you get out of bed in the morning, which foot hits the floor first, the way you go and do your daily ablutions, you're getting washed up, getting dressed. You have all these patterns and you do them as a ritual out of awareness every day. That's why your life looks the same day to day to day. It's time to make some changes and you have to do that with awareness and to assist you in getting there. I've got a gift for you and you'll see the link in the show notes. It is time for you to step in a new direction. Take your life someplace. It's never been because it's not going to happen unless you make that choice. Well, today I want to talk to you more about holistic healing and why you got to look at the whole body and everything in your world if you want to get the most joy, the most comfort, the most success, the most love, the most successful relationships in the world is by understanding how your body, mind, system works and how it all plays very neatly together. Think about this. You spend about a third of your life with your eyes closed. You spend it sleeping. You spend it blinking. You spend it imagining, seeing things in your mind's eye, virtualizing your reality. So when something happens that causes an energy block in your world, the way it gets recorded is not just according to the themes of your meridians, your chakras, your organs, your glands, your energy bodies. It goes into great details in all of those. But the other way it gets recorded is where your eyes open or were they closed at the moment the block formed? Going beyond that, were your eyes open or were they closed in the daylight? Were you looking indoors with the lights on? Were you indoors with daylight streaming in? Or were your eyes perhaps closed because you were sleeping in a dark room, in a light room? Here's how critical it is. When I was attacked and left with a brain injury, the brilliant gifted person who helped me to clear what mainstream medicine, and I'm talking about doctors in 16 different specialties, said couldn't be done. They told me I couldn't heal. Dr. Carl Ferrari, who's no longer on this plane, but thank goodness he was there for me because he was able to clear. I couldn't use my eyes. Everything was distorted. And you might imagine if everything's distorted when I look, I had really severe dizziness. And I also couldn't follow a conversation. And what Dr. Ferrari did for me was he asked, well, what time of day did the injury happen? And I thought, okay, it was June 9th, 1996. And, oh, so it must have been dark. Well, June 9th, in, at that time I lived in Virginia, it's not dark. So without realizing it, he cleared me of all the dizziness, of the lost memory issues, of the vision issues. Only well, it only lasted for about six 
weeks. Why did it only last for six weeks? Because we were doing the clearing for dark out and I was indoors, lights on. Well, when it came back after six weeks, obviously I was super disappointed. And then a year later, I happened to be looking out the window on June 9th at 7.40 p.m., which was the time the attack happened. And guess what? It wasn't dark out. I was inside, as I said, I was looking out, but the lights weren't on because it was still daylight. It was just barely dusk coming on. So I went back to Dr. Ferrari and I told him it was dusk. It wasn't dark out lights on. And he did the same energy routine for the time the injury actually happened, causing all the energy blocks throughout my body, mind, and spirit. And guess what? All those elements, all those limitations disappeared and they did not come back. So it's essential to look at the daylight, whether there's artificial light, whether there is daylight coming through, are the lights on, is it dark out? Lighting situation is very critical in how things get recorded for you. And I was working with a client and her thumb was hurting. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to clear to stop hurting. And then the universe said, ask her what the weather was doing. So I did. And she thought a moment and she said, it was raining. So as soon as I put raining into the circuit, it cleared. So what I learned that day was eyes open and closed in the light, in the dark, in all lighting conditions and in all weather conditions, all those factors matter. But they also matter in another way, depending on how an injury happens. And it can cause a scoliosis. Now you probably have heard or think a scoliosis means your spine has some kind of curve that's not supposed to be there. Well, actually a scoliosis is a neurological event. So maybe your muscles will cause your spine to curve. Well, maybe they won't. So after that attack, and so much was hurt in my body because of the brain injury. I had 11 different scolioses. I guess that's the plural. And we cleared them one by one. And when I was a teenager, we noticed that my neck, the top of my spine went like that, a very sharp curve. And nobody ever thought, to try and do something because frankly, I don't think they knew what to do. And I went through life for, oh, I don't know, 20, maybe 30 years that way. And after the scoliosis were cleared, guess what? I didn't have that curve anymore. And when I did scoliosis clearing on other people, we'd measure them before and after the work I remember I had one client who grew a whole inch because his body did, in fact, straighten out. So all these elements play a part. What I wanted to mention when I was talking about everything I've mentioned so far about the lighting conditions, the weather conditions, if you've ever been to a chiropractor, and you were really hurting, and then the chiropractor did an adjustment, and you felt really good, much relief. You know what I'm talking about? If you've ever had an injury that caused your spine to go out of alignment, then you know what I'm talking about. And a really good chiropractor can help you clear that 
I personally would never ever go to a chiropractor who doesn't do kinesiology because I worked on a young man. He was just in his 20s and his chiropractor had broken his neck and he was paralyzed down one side. Now, fortunately, I had tools. I knew how to help him. So within a half hour's time, he had tingling restored. But the reason I'm bringing this up is when you're going to the chiropractor, you're indoors and you're in a room with lights on. Chances are they're either LED or fluorescent lights, which that's white light that's really interfering with your wellness anyway. But if the chiropractor's clearing and realigning your spine, yes, you're going to feel good. I don't know if you ever had this experience. I did. By the time I left the building, went down the elevator, got out in the parking lot, got in my car, ouch, the hurt was back. Because I had only been cleared because the information was not put in when the work was done, that it was indoors during daylight hours and the lights were on didn't get cleared for those specifics so it came back and if you find yourself going back over and over again in fact way too many chiropractors will tell you well you gotta come three times a week for two three weeks and then you gotta come twice a week and then you gotta come back every month for uh I forgot what word they use but just to redo it like a tune-up you get on your car well, if you know how to include the eyes, the conditions, the lighting conditions, the weather conditions, that's going to be covered. It's not going to come back when you have the adjustment. At least that has always been the experience when I work on the client. So that's one big category. Now the other thing to do is... The top vertebrae, the C1, your cervical vertebrae, it's not exactly a vertebrae. It's more like a, I'm holding my finger forming a ring. The ring, your C1, is called the atlas. And the job of the atlas is to hold your head on straight. Well, it's very easy for the atlas to get bumped off and when I was correcting the atlas, I only knew corrected if it moved to the left or if it moved to, move to the right. And what I learned, because I had that brain surgery, and they had to shave off part of my atlas, and they knocked it in such a way that it was actually not up. So my atlas was up 45 degrees besides being knocked off center and man until I went to the orthospinologist and he fixed that for me it just takes a second for me to know somebody who is skilled at it and there are an awful lot of atlas doctors out there who aren't so skilled I've been to many of them when you go to the one who knows what he or she is doing, you will notice a great relief immediately. Because here's what happens when your atlas is out of alignment. When your atlas is not at the exact precise angle and location that it's supposed to be, your spine has to go all out of whack to be able to hold your head on straight. So you're going to have every vertebrae connects to the nerves running through or connecting to an organ system and to a set of muscles. So when you have a vertebrae that's out of alignment, you have an organ system that's being compromised. You have the organ system being compromised. You have the corresponding muscles that are not working because they're out of integrity. And when that happens for a long time, and it's out of your awareness, if you don't go 
to a kinesiologist or somebody like me who knows how to see what's going on to make those connections to interpret it and clear it. What's going to happen is you're going to have, because every muscle comes in pairs, one of them's going to be turned on. It's called hypertonic. And the matching pair is going to be turned off. And that is an injury waiting to happen. So after you check on the atlas, or your healthcare practitioner will do it for you. The next place to look is hydration. A hundred percent of people who I've worked with over the last few decades, a hundred percent were dehydrated. Why were they dehydrated? You could drink a gallon of water, which is a horrible idea because you're going to wash out all your electrolytes. Don't ever do that. How much water should you drink? It should be take your body weight in pounds, divide it in half, and translate that to you need that many ounces of water. Somebody who weighs 100 pounds needs 50 ounces of water a day, but not just any water. It has to be water that your body can assimilate. It gets into the cells. Inside your body, you have two oceans of water. One's outside the cells. The other's inside the cells. And you cannot assimilate water unless it has certain minerals. Best way to be sure you have those minerals is by using real, pure, authentic Himalayan salt, the pink salt not cheap stuff that's got coloring and has no minerals, or Redmond salt, which has all those minerals also. Your body needs, must have salt to assimilate water. So you can have a problem with hydration, with dehydration, with water assimilation. And once those things get cleared, oh my gosh, you're going to notice a huge difference instantly in your functioning. It'll be very, very, very noticeable for you. Now, I had one person come to me. She was a whole pint, two glassfuls of water low. So she had a whole bunch of physical stuff going on. Or maybe it's moody stuff. The fact is, you got to be hydrated, you got to be absorbing the water, you got to be assimilating it and using it and having it go through your body. And you've heard me talk about the stem cell patches. They can't work if you're not hydrated. In fact, most things that you're putting in your body can't work if you're not hydrated. The other critical thing after you've done the atlas and the hydration, the very next critical thing is aligning your TMJ. And you say, well, my TMJ is okay. Here's the thing about the TMJ. It's responsible for 90, 90 percent of your neurology and 80% of your muscles, which is why all those people with the knee problems had a misaligned TMJ. And people who also had the misaligned TMJ had memory issues. They had confusion. They had all kinds of cognitive stuff that wasn't working. Your TMJ is connected to your ankle. It's connected to your knee. 100% of people who came to me with a knee issue, their TMJ was out. Transmandibular joint. You don't have to have a clicking jaw. You don't have to have pain happening when you open your mouth for it to be out of alignment. 
and memory issues, thinking. Oh, I, I remember reading a study about the psychologist said, look, the brain over here, this section, it's too small and that section's too big and that is what's causing the ADHD. Well, no. What's causing it is when the TMJ is out, your, what do you call this thing? Your skull. Your skull has, there are a number of parts to your skull and they get jammed out of place so that there's no choice except for your brain to get squished in some areas and to be overexpanding in other areas. You fix the TMJ, memory issues, ability to think clearly. If somebody you know, suddenly they're a sweet angel one moment and the next moment they're nasty and you don't want to be around them. That's a TMJ being out. And there's one bone in your skull. It's called a sphenoid. It's back up here. If you know what to look for, you can see a sphenoid switch. And you will notice when the it moves up or down that that person's mood just it likes it snaps and you can push it back up because the sphenoid bone is the one and only bone that connects to all the other bones in your head so these are the most critical things that i see consistently out of alignment oh and there's one more critical piece heavy metals we live in a terribly polluted world it's impossible that you don't have heavy metals in your body. So that's something else that an energy kinesiologist can clear out. And, and it's really, really cool when it happens because I'll find that and I have heavy metals that I'm testing for specifically what's in there and where it's in there. And those heavy metals, they lodge all over the body, not just in your head. They'll be in joints. They'll be all the way down to your feet, to your ankles. And I energetically move all of them up into your bladder and then remove them so that all you have to do is go to the bathroom and the heavy metals come out. And it was really interesting. I had two different clients who were urinating green urine for a whole week because whatever heavy metal it was, I know copper starts blue and it can go green. Anyway, I don't remember specifically what the heavy metals were, but they were clearing that long. And if you have complaints of candida, you can't touch candida until the heavy metals are out because the candida feeds on heavy metals. So, anyway, those are things important to know for your well-being, and they're the very, very basics. And candida gets cleared once you have all the muscles which connect to all the elimination organs. You make sure all that's working, and then you can clear it. Because if you take heavy metals and other poisons out from where they're hiding. And they are hiding. They won't turn up in any kind of blood work because they're in your organs, in your body, hiding. And if you don't make sure all the muscles that connect to those organs are working at 100%, you're not going to be able to get rid of the heavy metals or the candida, and you'll just be putting it out in your bloodstream, in your body, and you're gonna wind up sick. So, those are really key things to know when you're starting your wellness journey. And if you have any questions, and if you want to work with me, you just contact me, and there'll be a, a contact link below. 
because we'll work long distance and we'll get your body, your mind, your spirit, because all of them work together. If you're somebody who really enjoys books, like I do, I have a, a very lovely, expansive library of books, but I also, when I really love a book, I, and I like to have the book in a hardcover or paperback because I take notes in it. I like to write in it. But I also listen to a book very, 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 very many times. And to be able to do that, I belong to Audible. And Audible is allowing you a free 30-day trial. You get to choose the book of your choice. And for 30 days, you can explore because there's incredibly much to explore in Audible. And in case you don't know, there are audio books. There are podcasts. This podcast is in Audible. And you get to keep the book even if for some reason you decide you don't want to keep up your membership. So the link also for that month's in the show notes and you want to take advantage of that because like I get a lot of history of philosophy like I have the history of eastern philosophy I have the history of western philosophy and they tend to come with downloads like the western philosophy was just short of 800 pages and I don't remember how many pages the eastern philosophy handout was Anyway, I've, I'm listening to something all the time, podcasts, audiobooks, and then I go and look up in the printed book so I can take my notes. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And remember to look in the show notes for all the information and key for you to know today. Remember to enjoy that's capital I N, capital J O Y, all one word. Enjoy every moment because nothing in your life happens outside of you, it all happens within.